Welcome back. It has been a great series. We're tied up one to one, and we're going to head into our next map here very soon. Pretty excited how this series has played out so far, but mm -hmm. we're very far from ending, I feel, as well. Yeah, I wish it goes to all the way to game five. I, I think, think it could. I think it could. Tempest had their moments. They had really good drafting in game number one. I think they started from the solo lane. They had the rotations, but talking about rotations, game number two. I think Tempest made some wise moves, like taking the boss early before L5 noticed it late. But turning that around also, L5 had some mechanical individual decisions. And Swoy, that got like Twilight Dream. That was a big Twilight Dream for sure. Yeah, that was really cool. Just him trying to survive. Everyone's like, it was He's the... Like, I'm walking towards the Twilight yeah. Dream, so notice me, senpais! And then Ice Block? The entire, <laughs> the entire team fight was designed to stop him from using I from using the Twilight Dream and mm -hmm. the entire team fight on the other side was to make sure he could use the Twilight Dream. That's why everyone was stunning him to death. And he finally was not stunned for like half a second. He was like Whoa. Ice Block and he everyone's survived, like everyone's right? like oh, oh and then they decided to try to kill him. Maybe they could have backed off and if they backed off they lose control. And if they lose control they get out sustained by the Vala. So it was a tough situation. But could the series get more any more epic? We're going to Towers of Doom. Our favorite map to cast, yes. G Clef. And this one is epic because Tempest, they are the one actually really focusing on rotations, but L5 has been a team that's been known as one of the stronger strongest teams of Korea on this battleground. Especially especially with the rise of Falstead. Is after the fall of Falstead a little less? But I'm exciting I'm I'm, I'm expecting a Falstead somewhere in between. Lockdown Falstead, SDE Falstead, both the great one. Yeah, I think that uh, there's a high chance we do see him. This draft is flying faster than I could write it. We're going Just to the like Aureol. Just like game one. Yeah. Vala ETC ban with Ario. Grey main Uther. Is it just going to be the prophecy? Is everything just going to come the same as it was before? And watch a diff a same comps on a different map? Could be. They're taking their time now. Okay, there we go. Okay, so far. Now they're gonna do Cassia Malthale. <laughs> it's the meta. It's the meta. <laughs> well, let's see, this one, of course, a little, a bigger map. Plus the rotations will come in a lot more. Maybe this is the map they will bring out Lunara along with Ario. I think the range damage will come in handy as they, won't, they want to poke a little more when they are, when teams are Channeling for the channeling for the shots, of course. Oh come on, where's my Cassiel Mouth Ale? I was just reading off the other draft from game one. It's exactly the same. They're going off script right now. Then again, they did wait till the end of the countdown before they locked it in, so maybe they're just gonna go full scripted. You can see Greyman's win rate is climbing in Korea, but it's still pretty low compared to how often he's picked. 96 games. Oh! No, that's not Cassia! Oh! Doesn't even look like her! There's a smork for you. Picking up Regar seems like they want to go diving in a little more. And will be a lot. Double support, AoE, when Martel is low. He can also he can sustain with the Tormented Soul with Rip Souls. But when he's low, he can also get Ancestral Heal. It's a perfect choice there. I think he'll be the only one diving in, possibly also Genji for the mobility and some and taking some kills. I think that's a possibility. I like the Apathur ban for this map. Johanna was drafted uh, last time. So ah. taking that away. Tyrael Genji. Genji on the other side. So first Genji of the evening. And now it could still take the Cassio, but I don't think it makes sense anymore because the Genji provide a lot of different types of damage and Tyrael can really put a number on what Cassio is trying to do. And now this is a different story for H82 because there's a Sank Sank on the other side. He may actually do no damage, yeah. even with the Rhaegar. Yeah, even though he has a secondary cleanse, he's going to kind of self-cleanse and the Rhaegar cleanse, he still might struggle to get that damage done. They have to find a way to bait the Sanctifications, I think. So what hero could allow them to do that? Would they try to use Sonya again? I or don't think they can't. Like, bring out Anubarak once more and just 
cocoon material so that Mar Martheo can dive in to buy that time. And then who's going to be the DPS too? We don't even have that yet. This draft for Tempest feels a little bit shaky. Okay, Lunara. Lunara. And it is the Anubra. Mm -hmm. Good call, G Clef. How did you know? It's No, it's not the meta anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it made sense from what we've been seeing so far from a lot of the Korean teams and how they team fight because we know. Yeah. And the Cocoon will be very handy, especially when Tyrio is looking for that sanctification, I think. Divine Shield can only will only save one, so I think H82 will have a better time along with the Cocoon. So now who's the soul laner? That's the big question. Will it be just an Arthas pick here? Sonya is still viable, actually, with this draft for L5. Like, Sonya could be their soul laner. We'll struggle in the fights against the Malthale and Lunara, though, I think. Especially against all the sustain on the other side. I think they're looking for a double support, but which one's the best one? Could just be a Tassadar here. Tassadar can also yeah. solo lane uh, pretty well. I think that's one way to approach this. But does make you a little bit leaned on that Tyrael. It's going to be Tahaka, though. Focusing a little bit on the global, I see. So the global very powerful on this map. Malthel cannot just teleport across the map to uh, make up for the lost time there, or, or the lost time in team fighting while soaking. But Malthel will defeat Dahaka very likely in lane. So during that moment, that's when it gets to be a little bit awkward because Dahaka's not going to be split pushing if he's actually just trying to survive, forcing rotations up to the top lane. Let's find out how this one pans out. A little bit of a weirder draft on both sides to this one as we head into Towers of Doom. Winner will take match point. Let's find out who it's going to be as we head into game number three. In blue, Tempest, Hyde on Ariel Honkono, on Rhaegar, Lockdown on Lenara, Sign on Anubarak, H82 on Malthale. And in red, L5, Hooligan on Tyrael, SCSC on Genji, Jung on Dehaka, SDE on Greymane, and Swoy on Uther. So, here we go, the battle between the Raven Lord and the Gravekeeper commences. Still don't know what the Raven Lord looks like. I heard he looks like a giant or, or a purple silhouette of a raven. You know there's a parody Twitter account called Raven Lord in Korea that just like tweets things in the Raven Lord tone. That has like a lot of followers. I think it has like 15,000 really? followers, yeah. What the? It's a Korean account? Yeah. Nice Co and, nice Koreans and love the Raven Lord, man. They're not Gravekeeper fans. And I know Hong Kong loves the Rain Raven Lord for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is risky. Just another English comment passing by. Just another another H82 passing by there. Because they have Dehaka, they can just solo lane. It seems like they're focusing on rotational work. But SCSC spots everything, so there's nothing to be scared for uh, L5. So, it ends up being this kind of weird situation where they're just trying to bully Dahaka. SC is trying to punish that a little bit, or was. Looking for the pick onto Lunara, we'll get the kill here. Is no cooldown reduction on that hope, or sorry, on the heal coming out from Ariel. Still not even level 7, so it doesn't really matter. That was yeah, just true. a little overextension coming out that's, from. That's true. Coming out, coming out from Lunara. Also, the. Deflecting all the minion shots actually did quite a quite a bit of damage onto Lunara there. That was well played. Nice catch by L5. Do they want to evade this one? Seems a little risky to me also. Yeah, so they're just spotting it and just going back. Tempest got an extra camp right before Salto Face. Actually, uh really aggressive Ooh, attempt SCS to deny, but he fails. He's a lot of damage for it. The Aka can get one, but can they fight in time or join into team fight? Seems like no. Tempest will get two. And L5 only gets one. This is kind of a weird early game 
Finally now, though, L5 looks like they will. We're going to go to this more standard laning section that mm -hmm. normally start the game with. And we didn't this time because of all the weird rotations from Tempest and what SC was trying to do. So now finally, Doc is going to get stuff done in the top lane. As I say that, he is actually going to go for a gank instead. We'll get the pick on the lockdown again. A second kill here. Nice drag coming out from him. Jung, huh? Without the drag, I, I don't think the kill would have been complete. Interesting too, uh, Lunara went for Cruel Spores at level 1. So that means that basically she's looking to do a lot more in lane. It's a weird talent where if you only hit like minions, then you get your cooldown reduced and your mana reduced uh, cost there. So basically only for pushing lanes. Interesting how that works out. She is paired with Lunara, so she's basically just on pressure duty in whatever lane L5 is not in, in this case, which is actually working out very well for her in terms of the talent choice pick. Certainly not saving her when the ganks come in. Yeah, so notice the bar. Hyde is holding that healing just in case another gank comes in against Lunara there. But meanwhile, after those two were the bait, and now they're going for the camp. They got the top one, and with the Hyaka, they can even rotate and go for their own. It seems like SC this time wants to delay and pressure a little more because they had the late, late rotation to the to the top. Pumpkin men are very joyful about suiciding to those towers. So, I mean, we're at even talent tiers. This altar phase could just be in a one-for-one -one trade. The camp to the bottom, though, is actually going to get huge impact because Greyman and Uther are staying down there. But Jonga does teleport in. No one is over there to interrupt him. So even though they did have that camp pressure advantage and a man advantage, it is going to still be the trade. Uh-oh, SC is having a rough time. Not that rough. I mean, it was a decently rough time there. He's he he had his cyber agility. He's okay. He's a ninja. So He's a ninja fine. cyborg. Yes, ninja cyborg, yes. Also, when you look at his visor, like, I'm not really sure if his eyes line up like that. That's a little bit weird. Ooh, all the Q damage goes in, and CSC, can you get a kill? Don't Sign think comes so. Oh, cocktail. cocktail. <laughs> Nicely done by SDE. Just Everyone the forgets wall. the cocktails every mm -hmm. time. I oh. believe that was also like near the max range of cocktail where, where it does not hit, then it doesn't hit anything. Oh, just enough. Well, now L5 takes a level lead. Yeah, they're going to have 3-0 to zero in kills. That gives them the advantage in experience, and they will have level 10 first. So this could be the beginning of a comeback in terms of core health. You got the late camp. The bottom lane was actually not too far pushed because Lunara died so many times. But L5, after catching the kill, they did not really pressure the lane. Seems like they, they want to pressure a lot more from top because they have the global on the Dehaka, maybe even get the bell tower later on. So the pressure will be even more against L against L5 for Tempest. Okay, we are going to see Five the dragon. Five rotation here. Yeah, a drag comes in. Honkano doesn't really have much of an escape. He is in wolf form, but does get taken out. At least puts down his healing totem for one second. HA2 is just trying to sustain himself up here, but will get taken out. And L5 is dominating this mid game now. They have level 10. Well, first the Boro charge away. Look at the minimap though. The altar of the bot. It's controlled currently by Tempest. Not spawned yet though, so it does give time for L5 to invade. They are going to try to collapse onto this and do the bot altar first so that they can guarantee both. The timing is just perfect for L5 to af after getting those kills in both altars now. Yeah, nothing that uh, Tempest can do about it. Well, not necessarily nothing. So they're definitely in a position to poke at least one more time, but risky. Now they're gonna get 10, but they've already lost both altars. They're about to lose sign. Does get out with a burrow charge. And no heroics had to be used for L5. Just simply casually took those. No resources spent. At least not yet. And maybe this time they're looking for a little more as Honkano seems like the target for now. Let's not catch the drag. Now Nubara comes from the other side to chase, but Martel is not here. That's the problem for Tempest right now. Ooh, that sank was a bit questionable. This actually gives an opportunity for Maltel to do a lot of damage if he get the position he tried to. Mm -hmm. SC did dismount him. Will be a wasted sank, actually. That's one of the things that's going to be really important. Remember we talked about how in this draft it was very likely Tempest was going to try to bait out sanks 
Cocoon can completely remove them, but they didn't have to use it. And also, Dive In from Sign can cause that to be baited, but it's not available. HD2 is looking for an opportunity, but L5 stays behind the Bell Tower. And it is going to be Hearth's home. 60 seconds on that Sanctification. Time ticking down on that very quickly. L5 definitely a scary moment for them without it, but looks like they their most dangerous moment has passed. Even more because the Haka took isolation instead of adaptation. So when Martel dives in with Mented Souls, if they don't have Sank, basically they have they don't have too much CCs. The drag can be one thing, but if that misses, basically AT82's able to do whatever he wants to do. So I think without sanctification, they, they just cannot fight. That is the biggest tool for them to save up until the perfect timing comes. All right, let's see how this next phase goes because this is really important for Tempest to control. Sank is up in 10. Such a razor thin timing that they, they probably don't know that they could have actually tried to force that fight without it. But you have to reasonably assume that Tempest knows that Sank is about to come online. So going ahead and popping the Tormented Souls here is very risky. Hooligan in perfect position. Look at this. He's just notice, waiting for notice it. There's a sign. Oh, Sank is there it is. down. They want to go in. And Sank cannot do anything. No cocoon even used. And the Tormented Souls comes out after the Sank, but it still doesn't matter. Really good Ancestral and Aegis here, but there's just not enough damage anymore. And this is going to be the full wipe. Hooligan wants to actually get the traded kill. Not entirely sure why he used his Aldruins there. Might have been able to get Hyde otherwise. And Lockdown... I don't think he can really try to force this. He wanted to, but... It wasn't reasonable. The altar is actually still active. <laughs> I think we're going to see the channel here from Swoy. Pings come down. They want to stop this from some damage. I think they all L5 all tap to the fountain coming coming back. I think this is the reason why we see Thornwood Vine instead of Leap here because Leap is very strong against the comp of L5 because of the dive. You need that escapability sometimes, but the Thornwood allows you to at least deny these channels. That's what we saw there. Also, if you're charge. isolated, you can't leap back. It's very hard. Yeah. And it's basically impossible, so. Okay. Sign just trying to zone here a little bit. They will end up losing this cap. This is actually a very risky thing that H82 is doing. He doesn't have his Tormented Souls available. Because it's one of the longest uh, altar phases of all time. This cap will force SDE down. But even still, they have so much good poke. They've got Shurikens. They've got Altruins. Even Radiance here is going to cause them to have to re-channel. The Naran's doing tons of damage, but an H82 also, but they need to get kills. If they just make all, every one of them low and not get kills, that would be the biggest question for Tempest right now as they're trying to turn this around There's quick. The cocoon. Cocoon. Okay, Divine Shield is used here as well. Sank was interrupted by the Cocoon. This is H82's opportunity. Sank will be up in just a second, though. There it is. They already got the kill under the Haka, though. Can they actually turn this fight? No, I don't think so. As Tyrael's already given up on it long ago. SDE with some sick jukes here. This is going to try to trade some damage out before he goes down. He knew the escape was pretty unlikely. And now Tempest fights the way back into this game. They will get the first bell tower of the game. And for this, uh, L5 is just frustrated. The Cocoon finally gaining that value. Yes. You called it in the draft. It happened. It interrupted the sank. It allowed that. Tormented Souls to do an incredible amount of damage there. And so, as we go into this boss phase, or not boss phase, but as we go into this boss take, Let's L5 see, doesn't really one? have much they can do against this. Like, they have Sank, but they don't have enough members. Can they, can they contest? I think they can. Dragon Blade can do the job. Sign is close. There's a Sanctification drop. The Sign Sank is so good. Target again. Cocoon was also so good. They still have enough members here, do they? The Sign survives. HA2 is still on this, healing himself up. This is a crazy fight. SC is still alive. L5 will get the boss. And what? I can't believe it, but they Just took it. Happened. I can't even believe it. The Sank was perfect. I mean, they couldn't have had a better Sank than that, but still. Tempest lived through that for so long. HA2 has kept healing himself up. The CCs coming in there from Sign were really well placed. The biggest factor for Tempest was Ancestral was on cooldown. And I didn't point before, but Onkana basically missed. He Ancestral on a very healthy target of his yeah. ally. And then it was on cooldown for this fight. I think that was the 
gained the team fight changing sure. so they did not have it, it was all cooled down and yeah. I think that cost is really big. Also I think they forgot to, as I did, really consider the fact that Jungha could teleport into the fight. Mm -hmm. Two were dead, but he was able to come in using brush shot, kept, got that movement speed bonus from the bush, and then came in at a flanking stage where he was able to grab somebody and also do that um, extra vulnerability from the dark swarms. So that was really uh, a big factor too that I think Tempest kind of uh, neglected. It's also so hard. The poison damage is a lot, but SCSC does not die. Toji takes a long time. Here's another team fight. Jungha dives in from the side. Great stuns coming out from Sign. Here is Tormented Soul with the Divine Shield dropping down. Sanctification is still on cooldown. That's a big problem for LF5. This has been a dirty series, man. We are just seeing casualties on both sides. Holy Ground not going to save as seen necessarily. He does have a dash. Gets out. Oh, sick grab onto the Beetle. Nice one. That Beetle had no chance. <laughs> it's going to be the capture here for Tempest. Oh, I feel like no chance, man. The Beetle doesn't have any escapes. Doesn't have self-cleanse. You can't cleanse the Beetle. How's the Beetle going to get out when he gets grabbed like that? He doesn't even have a long uh, lifespan anyways, so the, the drag like basically just takes half of his life away. The drags are very effective against Beetles. Okay, Wolf. Well. <laughs> Beetle doesn't have any <laughs> unstoppable abilities. Beetle has no movement options. And in fact, is really limited by the way that the AI is programmed. It's not actually even really able to think autonomously. So when he gets grabbed, man, it's not a good situation. Man. No real counterplays. It's hard. Life is hard. <laughs> it's hard, man. <laughs> Life of an insect, yes. <laughs> even if you're AI a cyber insect. beetle. Even if you're a cyber beetle, man, this is not any better. <laughs> okay, back to the real action here. Uh, as this has been a pretty messy game on both sides. We're tied up now 16 to 16 uh, in terms of uh, core health. Mm -hmm. In terms of talent tiers, we're at the same play, 16 16. L5 is closer to 20. This is still anyone's game to take. The next team fight will lead us to likely who will take 21st. And all heroics are available. It feels like this is the calm before the storm. It's the. Bot solo altar. Doc is going to stay up top and actually will even get the camp for additional pressure before coming down. He's got 20 seconds to clear that. Should just barely be able to get it done. I don't know why I said barely like that, but yeah. Just barely able to get it done. Just like your EXP. <laughs> just like my EXP. Yeah. I know how much the internet loves when I say that. I think the Tyrael's Holy Ground will be a giant tool when he when Hooligan is trying to zone out the entire back line, especially Lunara and Ario. If he's allowed to do that and drops a perfect sync, of course I think L5 will have a great favor in the team fight. No, I'm going to keep my eyes on Tyrael for now. And Cocoon uses coming out from Sign. Half of the Bell Tower's health got taken out by Dahaka taking that camp top, so that was a success. HA2 just trying to get mobility options here with that E. Didn't actually get anything hit. Here comes the tongue grab. This means the cocoon is going to have to be used soon. He's gone in very far. Doesn't actually commit to it, though. Isolation onto Lunara, and it's over already. They're just trying to bait the Sank instead of using cocoon, yes. and it does not work. Does not work at all. He was not taking the bait. Lockdown's taking a lot of damage. That positioning. Wow. Could have been dangerous for Lockdown. Good thing this is only one altar for Tempest, actually. If it was two, Dehaka can go mid or top any time to spread apart. Oh, this is a bad choke point to be in against these AoE damages coming out on the side of Lockdown as well as the Impale. Holy Ground, always a risk, too, but I think this might actually be the channel. Can Onkana just uh, get canceled? But it won't, it, be, it won't happen again. If he commits in, that would be a disaster. This is going to be a take for Tempest. Mm -hmm. That was so calm and collected by them. They tried hard that one time to force the Sank. They didn't get it. But after that, they played really patiently, just used the poke damage that Lunara has. When eventually the healing power of Uther with a single target doesn't matter against all the AoE when they got locked in that choke point. Lunara tosses down the vine. Like, Uther, once he uses Radiance, it's like, well, that's not going to be up for about 12 more seconds, you know? Q comes up, oh, that's not going to be up for a while. They even steal the cap. L5 is just trying to play for the 20. They don't have it yet, but they're about to. They don't even trade the bell tower. Here comes Jungle. Does oh, miss the drag. Grab. Isolation yeah. is on. Lunara, can he escape? He's got Ancestral. Trace for 
That the sank sanctification wasn't that really too. perfectly timed too. Yeah, he got a lot of damage done afterwards. I see Dragon Blade doing some damage, but the sustain is real on the other side. Tempest is back to full health. It all goes back to the Ariel pick, really, when we watch these fights. Ariel just allowing Lockdown to do slow poke, and it's out healing the heals from Uther. They side are solo in. healer. On the for the kill, and Hooligan barely survives on the other side. The poison it seems like he still has some HP left. Sign will just pick him off at the end. Will he? I Yo think so. And Uther dies off screen. Oh man, he bought some time there. The Impel didn't hit. Uther does go down. He was body blocked. We knew that was going to be a death. But yeah, the, the healing of Ario plus Lunara is just winning these longer fights. Tempest understands what their comp is designed to do. And they know that Uther has long holdowns on his heals. One of his heals is single target burst, which is not very strong. It's Lunara's slow tick damage. And so now, when you miss that, uh, and set, or sorry, the sanctification, it's not perfect. When you miss the tongue grab, and the fight goes long because you didn't get a pick early, and you didn't counter the extra damage that came out from Althale, you slowly lose, even with 20 available. The sh small shot callings of going in, diving in, and coming back for the heal, I think Tempest is winning the fight because of the shot calling. All five really not hitting on perfect target, especially missing that one drag is a big tool, and they need to... Jungle needs to land on that every single time because they need kills from the beginning. Here comes another drag, but the healing in time. And Hakona survives, and so much damage coming out from Lunara, actually. Oh, that Aegis was really well done. The yeah, Aureo heals are really good here, too. Oh, Sank is late. He does keep everybody alive, but what are they going to do after it expires? Mm -hmm. They're all just going to die. It's essentially a target range for Lockdown to just kill whoever he wants. Look at him at the back, near full health. Kakun is such a good counter against Tyrael right now. And so good. Late Sank is basically the fight was already over. You called it and oh, man. 20 Hool to 20, but Hooligan does survive again. Hooligan survives again. This guy's a god on the Tyrael, but it won't matter. It didn't save his team uh, quickly enough. That bell tower on the top, though, it's keep keeping a lot of the shots safe away from, Temp uh, away from L5. So right now, Tempest, they want to try to take another belt out because the rotation to the top will take a yeah. lot of time. This is kind of risky, but not really considering the long death timers. Mm -hmm. So they're going to clear this. The top one is getting cleared eventually. I don't think they're going to try to double it. I think they're just going to look for the five shots here because um, they do have bot. So even though they lost the top, sure, they're, they're, they were even. Now they're ahead, so they're going to get the five shots. And then they take the boss and game over. Yeah, I think so. I think Tyrell's so, yeah. trying to save it, and Jonga may come in time. Let's see if they have enough this is, damage. This is going to be so close. A little risky because they do not have supports. Oh, man, So they're yeah. giving up for now. That okay. was a risky call by uh, by Tempest, but they knew they had, I mean, they did the simple math because they're not on stream right now, and they knew that if they took the five shot in the boss, they'd win the game. And they're just going to trade these bell towers. They're always going to be five to three. Very likely for the rest of this game, unless something crazy happens. Uh, I think that the Wisp actually sees Tyrael too. Lenora, I think, has vision of that. One of the other uh, factors of Lenora we never talk about because it feels so insignificant, but in moments like this, it's so huge. They know that all that L5 is focusing on right now is those bell towers. I but think they know L5 has better tools to actually control yeah. those balls. It's okay it's though, they're risky. 16 to 4. I think this is actually gonna be fine. If it fails, they're okay. Mm -hmm. If it if works, it they win the game. So I think this is a worthwhile risk to take. They knew Hooligan was scouting this. It looks like they're just trying to bait a fight. That's exactly what they're doing. Trying to bait this fight here, getting so much damage done to SDE. They knew Hooligan had vision because the Wisp saw him. So they were just trying to say, okay, let's show him a rotating boss, force him to take an awkward path, and then we're gonna kill whoever comes at the weird angle. So that was trying them trying to get SDE, he didn't fall for it. And now L5 has to play perfect for the rest of the game. And, you know, like we were saying, if they didn't respond quickly, they simply lose it. It's all over, and Tempest takes match points. So this has been a really uh, calculated game by Tempest from the start. Even and for Tempest, because they don't have global, and there's, there's the Haga on the other side. If they lose one big team fight, if they get out, out macro, let's say they, if they lose one or two bell towers, if they make a big rotation, that means L5 will have an easier time rotating around them. And this game actually go towards L5. No one knows until until the next phase. And it's two alters right now. Okay, Jungha gets caught here, called out on his rotation. And another missed tongue grab. And look at all the damage that Lockdown's able to do. Even the sappers are tanking for him right now. Okay, Sign's looking for the channel. They cannot allow this. Doesn't have tongue grab. Whew. That was almost the end of the game right there. 
Oh, look at his solo. I think this is just going to be it. Like, yep. L5 can't win this long fight no, anymore. They need yeah. the pick, and they don't have it. They don't have sustained damage. Exactly. And Lunara is just crushing them. This is going to be it. There's no way they can make this happen. Not even a perfect Sank would turn it for them. This is their last chance. They do get the grab cleansed Cleanse. immediately. Let's use and I don't think this is the perfect dive they want to... They want to come in. The Haka's getting the shot on top, though. It yep. may be perfect. He is going to steal it. If can do it. He is going to steal it. And L5 with that trade onto Sion actually caught up a little bit. But sorry, the real battle is about to begin. They need both of these altars. The one at the top was not enough. SC riskily channels. I mean, this is so intense. This feels like a European game right now. Everyone's playing so side. patient. He's trying to grab onto Hong Kong if he can. Okay. Will they be able to stop the sink? Okay, Smash does Divine Shield. Shield though. It's still That's interrupted. A big problem. He's interrupted. Five more seconds so he can use it. So much damage being done from H82. He goes down two seconds before the sink. And it looks like that is going to be game over here for L5. No way to win the fight without it. It's just slow poke coming in for lockdown. They do get the interrupt off, but it's going to cost them all their lives. And with it, the game. That's all. Redemption is here for Uther. But well, they just don't have enough damage anymore. They're just spying time right That's now. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And shot. Last four shots will get grabbed by Hong Kono, and that will be game three, guys. What a game we're seeing right now between Tempest and L5. 2-1. Tempest leading the series. I don't think L5 will allow another Aureal draft to mm -hmm. go through. They will not allow that. They cannot. Simply put, the understanding of how to defeat Tyrael in these fights so that Lunara could just do massive amounts of damage so that uh, we would see massive amounts of damage coming out from Malthel as well was really smart. They are knowing... Tempest is playing smarter than L5 is in every way right now. Mechanically, they might still be behind, but they've dealt, they dealt with the uh, Tyrael using the Anubarak. They dealt with Greymane Uther by using burn damage from Malthale and Lunara, which then also pairs very well with the Ariel. And Uther is solo. He could Q somebody, right? Like, say Greymane loses a third of his health. Lunara's poking him, locked down, shooting at him. Mm -hmm. And SD is like, all right, I need some heals. And then he Qs him, and then Lunara walks away for a minute, then shoots him two more times. He's like, uh-oh, where's my Q? He's like, well, I, I just used it. It's on a really long cooldown. And then the damage just comes in eventually. You can't deal with it. Yeah, it's the last fight, the moment that Hooligan took too much damage to have the Holy Ground to bother them, to disposition them, so that Jonga could land on an easier drag. But he took to so too much damage that Divine Shield had to be on Tyrio. I think the moment that Divine I saw Divine Shield, I thought the team fight was oh basically yeah. over. He didn't. He couldn't even use the sank, and it was it was it was very tough job for Hooligan to actually harass, not take too much damage so he doesn't eat up too much heal from Uther because if Uther heals him, then his DPS cannot be healed. So it was a tough choice. I think they will be looking for that double support coming up in game number four. I I think you have to, I, you know, you have to really look towards getting rid of the Aureo, mm -hmm. prioritizing it yourself and going into the double heals, as you say, because Sank, working, using Sank as your guaranteed win in a team fight is old news now. It's not as good as double support. Double support is more consistent. Double support gives you more longevity. And the old Tyrael style that Tempest really developed in Korea, made popular, um, along with E-Star in China. And I know everyone wants to give a Thero Angel credit, but I'm just talking about Korean side of things. That style is still strong, but I don't think it's as strong as a double support mm. with a good battery for the Ariel. And when you have an Anubarak that could stop a lot of the cocoons from happening either way, by either interrupting with really good burrow charges or just simply cocooning. Um, and it gets a little bit rough. So I don't know where we're heading for map number four just yet. It will be the map choice, very likely, of Tempest. And even though Warhead Junction is open, I think we're probably going to see a more standard map, maybe BOE. It's uh, still BOE open. Cursed Hollow is Cursed still Hollow, open. Yeah. And even though, even though Tempest did not take globals, I think their rotations today and decisions, some... Some goofy decisions here and there, but in terms of rotations and which one to focus on objective team fight, I think their timing, even though when sometimes they fought when they were down a talent, down a level, like 18 to 20, 15 to 16, and they won the team fight because they knew they had the right tools. Those decisions at the moment is really giving them the momentum to come back in this game, and they took the game, and I think yeah. the series can still go to anyone, but 
Tempest is leading it with I, two on. I two can't on. even really say anything positive strategically about what L5 drafted. I think they just thought, we're the better team. This draft is standard. It'll work no matter what. Mm. Like, we'll just win with this. I think that was kind of about as deep as the thoughts went. We talked about drafting being changed between multiple members. Back at BlizzCon, it was Jung Ah, SC. SDE is silent mm -hmm. as hell tonight. He is not speaking words. Maybe SC, SC is doing yeah, it tonight. Yeah, probably we tonight it's SC. We still do not know exactly who's 